everyone. Good evening, boys and girls. How are you? How was your day today? Let's hope it was all good. All right, today we want to continue with our discussion with regards to civil drawing. Yesterday we looked at a section with regards to 2019 paper. Now what we want to do today is to make sure that we are able to complete another element of question number four of paper one, which is the elevation. Remember last time when we started, we started with the floor plan, then went on to the section, and finally we concluded with ele an elevation, okay? But like I said, yesterday we started with a section, so we are going to look at an elevation today. Then from there, we complete the task by looking at the floor plan. By that time, I'm hoping that you would have understood all the concepts to do with question number four, so that as you face your exams, as you go to the exams, the tri exams and the final exams, you would go there with confidence and you will be able to achieve your result. So I want you to pay special attention as we look, go through this together. And I'm going to demonstrate all the technicalities that you need to master in order to answer this question. Remember, when we look at question number four in civil drawings, it is the major part of the exam. Basically, half of the marks for the paper are for question number four. So that's why we are putting a lot of emphasis in terms of answering this question, okay? But later on, of course, we are going to touch those questions that are associated with question number two, with question number three. With question number three, we have already touched that when we did our perspective. So we are going to look at question number two in detail the various topics that are covered with regards to, to question number two. So let's focus now at what is it that we are going to look at at today's work. Like I said, we are going to look at the elevation and we are going to look at the roof detail. We are going to look at the component of the roof which is the rainwater downpipe. We are also going to look at the walls and how to define the step as it is shown on the floor plan. But we are also going to define the issue of the finished floor level, the NGL, the door, the window, and the levels. So make sure you pay attention as we go through all these tasks or elements of the task such that you'll be able to apply this on your own. Remember, every time you need to subtract me from the equation to check whether you have understood all the concepts. And I'm sure you are. And I'm hoping that these lessons are bringing value to your understanding or adding value to your understanding so that you are able to stand on your own. Don't forget these wise words, right? I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, I do and I understand. Like always, our focus is on the third aspect of this statement, which has to do with the doing and understanding. For you to be able to understand what we are talking about and demonstrating right now, you need to take your pencil and paper and sit down and be practical, okay? Do it in order to understand it. Just hearing about what I'm saying would not add value to your knowledge. The same applies, just looking from a distance, it would not add value to your understanding as well. So I want you to make sure that you understand what we are doing by practically applying the concepts. Thank you, boys and girls. Let's go straight into the business of the day.
Right, okay. Now, when we stopped yesterday, after defining all this in terms of the section, right, we tried to start with the elevation, but we could not complete because of limitation in terms of time. Right, but this is what we did. I'm just going to recap on what we did, okay? Looking at the floor plan, this is our floor plan. I'm just going to take this one slightly up. Like that. Right, let me take it down so that we are able to see all the elements. Okay, right, okay. So we have put our floor plan. The floor plan is drawn to scale one is to 50. And the elevation that we are going to work on today would also be drawn to scale one is to 50. So it's slightly different to the section where we had to convert the measurement which is given on the floor plan to scale one is to 20, okay? But in this case, as you can see, all right, the scale that we are using, it's scale one is to, one is to 50, okay? Right, so what it means by projection, the size that we have in terms of the, in terms of the floor plan is the same size that we are going to apply on the elevation. Now, I just wanted to recap as to how we were able to reach these lines, okay? Right, let's start from the information that is given with regards to the elevation. Right, you have got the measurement from here to there, which is 4,550, okay? Right, so this is the measurement from, from the uh, NGL to the ridge line, okay? So what we did yesterday was, we divided, we took our calculator, 4,550 divided by, by 50, and we got 91. So the 91, we measured, right? After extending this line or the roof line, we measured from here, right, to there. So this is the height 91, okay? Let me just drop this one slightly down. This is the height from here to there, which is 91, right? Which is the overall height in terms of the elevation. So if you are looking at this, that is the maximum in terms of the ridge line, right? And this would take us to, to, to the NGL. Then we drew this line, okay? And also that one. The moment we did this line, okay, after extending the walls like this and the walls like that, we were able to define the NGL, okay? Once we have defined the NGL, you can easily label that, okay? So that you won't be forgetting the, the label at the end. Remember, you'll be under a lot of pressure in an exam. So you want to make sure that you are done with every aspect of the drawing that is not going to change. Right, the next thing that we did was to also project the eaves or the roof overhang, right? And also project it from here to the ridge line, from here to the ridge line, from here like that. Right, then we took our, right, we took our set square. Remember, our pitch is at 30 degrees. So once we have projected from here, like this, projected all the way to this point, right? Then you draw a line at 30 degrees, right? Like that, at 30 degrees, you do the same. After projecting from here, you draw a line at 30 degrees like this, right? And if you project again from here, this line here that you drew earlier on, right, it's going to be cut by this line. So at this point, you draw again a line at, at 30 degrees like that. So this is what we did, boys and girls, yesterday. Thereafter, okay, after projecting, right, the roof overhang, right, and also defining the height of the fascia board from here, to there, okay, which is 300. If we go back to the information that we have, 
Right. We know that in terms of the fascia board, it's 300 by 20, right? Fascia board with 150 by 150 millimeter in terms of the gutter. Right. Okay. So we took the 300, right, at the point of connection with, right, with the if we took the 300 from here to there then drew two lines like that, like that, okay? So basically what it means is that, right? If we come to this point, we can also again draw a line here, like that. Then also do the same. Draw a line like that. Right, if you check with regards to the information that we have, you can actually see partly we have defined the batch board, okay? Right, which is the same size as our fascia board, which is from here to there is 300, from here to there it's also 300, okay? Right, the next thing that we want to define as well, right, you would find that at this point, you have got the roofing cover in terms of the information that is given. We have got the roof cap and we have got the ridge cover, okay? Which is the same thing, you know, the roof cap as well as the, the ridge cover. So we want to provide that. And this is what we are going to do. All right. Now we go back slightly, right? to the elevation, to the sectional elevation, right? The distance from here to there and the distance from here to there, we want to take that. Let's measure that and see how many millimeters are we talking about? Right, it's six millimeters. So if we say six millimeters multiplied by 20, okay? We are going to get 120. Now divide this one by, by 50, we are basically going to get 2.4 2 millimeters, okay? So we are going to measure two millimeters, which is something like this. Then draw a faint line like that. Then you also can do the same here, right, to define the ridge cover like that. Then you also do the same on this side, like that. You also do the same like that. There you go. Right, so we now have put Right, in terms of the ridge, that side, we now have got the ridge cover and the ridge cover. Here, we are not going to provide that because this side is the, is the badge board, okay? So if you don't want to mix, you are going to outline from here to there. Because this, remember, is sitting on top of the roof, okay? So we don't see this ridge capping. The same applies, you can come here now and define this, right? That's not going to change. And you also come here and do the same this side, like that, okay? Right. You now take, right, this line, which is the same as that one, you take it like that, right? This is the start of the gutter, okay? And this is the end part of, of the roofing material, right? Sometimes you may need to just draw a, a faint line like that, slightly thicker than a construction line, but not as thick as, as an outline, okay? Right, remember this one is the hipped part. We are not going to disturb that one a lot, right? Then from there, you need to define in terms of the information that we are given, right? We have got the end part like that. Then you need to define the 
data in terms of its position, like I said, right, you take this second line to be the start of the gutter. We know that the gutter is 150 millimeters, okay? All right, so 150 millimeters in terms of width and 150 millimeters in terms of the depth. So from here going downwards, we need 150. 150 would translate to three millimeters, okay? So I'm going to measure three millimeters, right? From here to there. Remember, we are using scale one is to 50. which is this part, okay? Right. Then I draw this one all the way like that, okay? Right, to hit the, the, the batch board, all right? Then you find that I will have part of the fascia board and part of the fascia board, right? Normally you'd find that at the ending position like this, you can simply miter that and create an extended part of of the gutter okay all right and this is how you would be able to see this so you would define this one nicely like that then you have now the gutter in position like that and then just defining it correctly then you take this one all the way that is also the gutter but we shall still require the rainwater downpipe. So I'm going to outline this part like that. Then outline the end part of the roof like that. Right, so that is the, the fascia board. You can as well also define this end. Like that. And take this one like that, right? You do the same this side, like that. But it does not go all the way because now that one is a batch board. Right, you close at the top. Close this part. Close this part as well, okay? Boys and girls, you can actually see that our roof is taking shape. Then I come here, right, I do this, that part, then the bottom part, which is this one, like that. You do the same, this is our batch board, which is the same as the fascia board, right, in terms of the height. So they are both 300 and, and 300. All right, okay. So we started with the roof. We haven't defined the walls as yet. So we have got the information with regards to the roof. It's almost done. All right, then if you check at the bottom here, you'd find that there's a rainwater down pipe and there are specific, there's specific information that has been written, right? you would find that 150 by 150 gutter on 300 by 20 millimeter fascia board with diameter 100 rainwater down pipe. That stops 50 millimeters off the ground. So this is what you, we want to do, right? We need to measure from here to there, 50 millimeters. 50, we know we are using scale one is to 50, which is basically a millimeter. Right, we mark a millimeter like that. We take this one. Right, a faint line like that. Right, so the distance from here to there, which is the, the same from here to there, is 50 millimeters. Then we project, right, in terms of. Right, the rainwater down pipe would project from here all the way to the gutter. We project this all the way to the gutter like that, okay? Now, this should actually touch the gutter, okay? 
right? Once you have done that, right? If you don't have a circle template which will be able to draw this small little circle diameter one millimeter, this is what you can do. By touching that lower part, you draw freehand like that. So you now have got the end part in terms of the rainwater downpipe. Then you complete this by drawing from here to there, drawing from here to there, like that. There you go. You now have got the rainwater downpipe in position. Once you have defined the rainwater downpipe, you can go back now to your fascia board and define that part which you are able to see, which is from here to there. Then you skip this part and all the way up until you get there. You have got now the fascia board, you have got now the uh, batch board in position, you have got also the gutter in position, okay? And the rainwater down pipe in position. But at this point, there's nothing that would stop you from defining the walls. You see this corner here, right? Which should go all the way, right? We'll take this one up, stopped by the fascia board. Now the wall is in position, right? Remember, always start from the known to the unknown. This is another corner of the wall, so we can project from here, right? It's visible, there's nothing that would stop you from seeing this. So you start from here all the way, right, to the roof. Then you are also able to see this one, which is drawn from here to there. It's like that. Right, our roof is now in position. Now also we have inserted the walls but right, which are hitting the batch board this side as well as the fascia board on this other side. Right, okay. The next thing that you want to look at, okay, right? These are the steps which are leading into, into, uh, into the building and there's a window here. Right, I just want to complete this part of the window and the door there with regards to the sliding door. Right, I hope you still remember all the steps that we did with regards to completion of the sliding door, okay? Right, I'm going to do this so that we are able to apply it there as well, okay? All right, what I said, right, when you are given right the opening for the sliding door this is what you need to do you might at this side and again from the other end right then you get the midpoint like this that is halfway okay right so from here to there it's halfway from here to there it's halfway let me just make it slightly darker in terms of that part, like that, so that is clearly visible. Okay, right. Then you measure 50 millimeters this side and 50 millimeters that side. Right. We know by now that the thickness of the panel in terms of the sliding door is 50 50. So I'm going to measure one millimeter this side and another one millimeter that side, okay? Representing 50 millimeters. Then I take this one, this side, like that. And you do the same this side, like that. So either side, you have got 50 and 50 as well, okay? Right, the other thing that you need to do, you also need to find the midpoint in terms of the center of of the door, right? So I'm going to do this miter like that, get to the midpoint, then define a line like that. So that is roughly the center of, of the opening, okay? Look at the information that is given. You look at the information that is given, right? 
Again, it's from left to right, okay? From left to right in terms of the opening. Right, as you can see, right, in terms of how the sliding door can be represented in terms of the top view, you'd find that it could be one, two, three, four, but I'm not going to use this style in terms of presentation, right? I want to draw it in an open position so that you are able to see, okay? All right, now I put halfway, right? From here to there, that's halfway. From here to there, that's another half. Right, if it is opening to the right, I can take this one. Draw a line from halfway and draw a line from halfway, right? This is the fixed part, right? From here to there, right? So this panel that I've drawn, which is halfway, is the fixed part, right? And we denote this one by letter X like that. The part of the door which does not open is represented by letter X like that. Then you may decide to measure, say five millimeters from this end, and beyond the center line, you also measure five millimeter like that. Then you draw a faint line this side and another faint line this side. You can then outline from here to there and from here to there, okay? This is the other panel. Then you close this part and you close that part, right? So this is the panel which moves, okay? Which is moving from left to, to right, okay? This could be inside or it could be outside. And this panel that moves is denoted by a letter O. So when you are looking at a plan and you see X, you know automatically this is the panel which does not move. When you see O, you know that is the movable part in terms of the sliding door. Right, we need this information in order to complete the detail on the elevation, okay? Right, even though our today's work is basically focusing on, on the elevation, but there are some requisites in terms of you being able to complete that, you need this information so that you can project going up and so on. Right, before I complete the elevation, I want us to focus on the window. There's a window here. Let's check which window is it. Right, if you check, it is window number one, okay? So you go to your window and door schedules. This is window one, which is 1,500 by 1,200 in terms of the depth. Right, so we want to measure 1,500, right? 1,500, let's just check if we are to calculate that. 1,500 divided by 50, how many millimeters are we talking about? We are talking about 30 millimeters, okay? Right, and the space that has been left is from this point to that point. Let's see if we are going to get 30 as well. Oh, fortunately, the space that has been left for the window is basically equal to the size of the window. So we don't need to modify the space which is there. It's basically the size for the window opening. So I'm going to do this, right? Sometimes you need to verify whether your lines are still parallel to each other. Draw a faint line all the way. We shall need this line later on, right? draw a faint line all the way, okay, like that. So from here to there, which is the same as from here to there, that's where we are going to fit the window, okay? All right, then we need to define the extension of the window seal, right? The window seal, it extends by 50 millimeters, which technically is going to be one millimeter, so you mark one millimeter, then you draw a faint horizontal line like this, 
right at this point you can actually outline this line from here to there right you can take your set square and also outline from here to there and also from here to there right such that our our window should be taking shape right then in between this part and that part not from here to there but from here to there the width of the wall only you now need to insert the window frame the window frame if we check according to the information that we have all of that information will be provided all frames are 50 millimeters thick okay but the frame should be fitted right into the middle of the wall okay that's very important so we have got the distance from here to there right with experience you may not need to do the measurement of that or what you need roughly the middle of the space that you have right then you measure one millimeter you mark a point again with the experience you find that you should be able to estimate that one millimeter and you draw a line like this right in the middle of the wall not the space from the internal to the external seal like that right so that one right we should be able to see a gap from here to the end of the wall from here to there as well okay so right now the window is in position so this window is the one which we are going to project here this door is the one that which we are going to project there these steps are the ones that we are also going to project up there right so i'm going to bring our elevation slightly right we are done with the upper part of the roof we now focusing on this area okay right remember you'll be doing all this right with the limited time you have got four questions to respond to and you need to be fast in terms of your speed right so let's check the information that is provided you can check from here right first of all let's establish the finished floor level okay right in terms of the finished floor level is not given so what you need to do you go back to this information okay right from the ngl to come to this point we need 350 plus 100 which would give us 450 right so you say 450 divided by 50 what do we get we get nine millimeters okay so you measure nine millimeters you mark nine millimeters that would give you the finished floor level right let me just verify it's fine right then you draw a faint line like that right once we have gotten the finished floor level right which is from here to there you now factor in this height which is 20 2050 okay sometimes you find it is 2100 but in this case it's 2050 2050 again to scale you can use a scale rule, but i just want to simplify for those that won't have the scale rule. divided by by 50 you'd find that we are talking about 41 millimeters so we measure 41 from this point going up like this right then you draw a faint horizontal line like that so from this line right up to there right you have got what we refer to as the window level height so that's what we have defined right now right if you have projected like this you have projected like this you can even outline this part right because that's where the window would start it's not going to change right but i haven't out projected from here and there and also the midpoint i'm going to do that right now take your set screen you project like this all the way you project also from the center which is this one like that i'm using these projections remember egd right it's part of the bigger concept of the orthogonal 
a, a theorem which is about drawing in orthographic projection, right? That's why we're basically using a first angle orthographic projection in this in this uh, concept because we are using the concept of orthographic projection, okay? Right, which is quite broad, right? And you find that by knowing the concept of orthographic projection, you can solve a number of problems related to EGD. All right, okay. So here from here to there, that is the height in terms of our opening, right, which is also given like this. Right, so we have got this from here to there, okay? That can be outlined as well. Let me just do it. So from here to there, you can outline that, okay? Right, the next thing that you need to consider, right, let's check if we are given that information with regards to the steps. Right, let's see, let's see. Right, you need one and two, right? Right, three, you now get into the building, okay? Right, with regards to steps, right, let me just skip something so that you are able to see. Right, okay. Now, you would find if this is the ground line, okay? Right, you have got steps like this, steps like this, step like this, then you reach, right? Maybe this part is the wall now, okay? Right, so what we have, all right? What we need to define right here, right? In this case, you find that the door is somewhere there, okay? Right, this one, you need this information, which we refer to as the riser, okay? And this one from here to there, which we refer to as the thread, all right? Right, so the riser and the thread, okay? All right, now, with regards to this information, we are, we are given this right from here to there. This is nine millimeters in terms of our height to scale, right? Which is 450 altogether as raw measurement, but to scale that's nine millimeter. Okay, so we need three divisions of three millimeter, three millimeter, three millimeter, so that we are able to get uh, this riser and this riser as well as that, okay? Right, so the three millimeter basically translate into one millimeter each riser like that. Right, okay. So we are we are not going to be able to see the trade because the trade is seen when you are looking from the top. Okay. Right. So I'm going to measure here so that it is easier to understand. Right. I'm going to measure. Remember, we said this is nine millimeter. Right, one, two, three, which is here. Right, then another three millimeter, which is which is basically here. Okay, right. So I need to draw lines, horizontal lines, faint lines, always like that. So this is the first riser, second, then I'm there at the finished floor level, okay? All right, so if I project from here, right? Project from here, my step, right like that. My step, right from here to there. Then the other one would start now from here, which is in line with, with the door, okay? Right, would we'll start from here to there and from here to there, then the other one would basically take you to into the house. So let me outline this. That is my first step. Take this one. That is my first step. 
then to the highs of height of the riser, right, which is this part, like that. Then the next one is this one, like that. But, but this basically will take you all the way up like this. Okay, so you have got step number one, step number two, then you are there in terms of the lower part of the sliding door. Like we said, in terms of the part of the door, right? You define with a thick line like that or a solid line, which defines the step up or a step down. So our door in terms of the profile, we are going to have it like this and have it like that. You'd find that on the elevation in terms of the information which is provided, there are some dotted lines here, but we are going to eliminate these ones and draw a solid line, okay? Simply to show that it is an external door, okay? All right, it is an external door. But the same applies even here, but here it's provided already, so there is nothing that we require to do there. Right. Once you have done that, the rest now you can show by way of dotted lines or any other line that would signify the presence of the finished floor level. So I'm going to show by way of dotted lines like this, right, from one end of the wall to the other end of the wall like that. Just to make sure that you won't forget, you can even write here, finished floor level. That's half a mark, that's half a mark, right? So if we know that we have got one and a half marks in terms of our labeling, right, let's go to our elevations, we find that for the levels, we have got one and a half marks. That's one, two, and the other one would come in in form of the elevation itself. Boys and girls, I want you to follow these steps. Question number four is the easiest question in EGD. So I want you to understand what we are doing so that you will be able to apply all these concepts with ease. Okay? All right. So let's start by completing the, the window, okay? Right, you have put the height from here to there, which is 1,200. Right, 1,200 would translate to divided by 50, 24. So we need to measure from here, going down at 24 millimeters. Right, I'm going to do that. 24 measure, that's 24. Then, Draw a faint line like this, okay? Right, once you have this, you can even outline that is the basic profile, that's a mark, right? And that's also another mark. And the bottom one here, that's also another mark, okay? Right, as you can see, in terms of the window, it's now being fitted in position, Right, let's look at also at the other information that we have. Right, from this end to the start of the frame, this smaller frame is 500. 500, that's 10 millimeters. 500 divided by, by 50, that's 10 millimeters. So I'm going to measure from this end to that end here. All right, and I draw like that. Now, if you, again you check on the information, please do not put this thing away. Always keep it close to you. All frames in terms of the windows are 50 millimeters, okay? 50 millimeters by now we know it's, it's just a millimeter. Let me just check this measurement. This, it's, it's a millimeter, so I'm going to miter here. Miter there and also miter at the top like that. All right, then draw a line. 
I'm going to draw it all the way because I also need that when I am working on the on the sliding door. But on the lower side, I don't need it all the way. So I'll simply do this mitre like that. Okay. Right. Go to the other side. You also do the same mitre. Then let me just check. Is the first one so I need to mitre to the right like this. So what I want you to do, I want you to get hold of the 2019 paper. You follow the steps that I'm demonstrating right now so that whatever you do, it becomes part of you. The knowledge that you would want in an exam is basically on your fingertips. You can only do that through practice. Right, I take this one down like that. There you go. Okay, all right. I can now define my window, right? I should be able to come up with this. So I outline this part. It may not necessarily be a thick outline, but it should be something that is thicker than a construction line. Like that. There you go. Right, then you come here, you close, close this part, close this part, and close that part. The window is now in position, but it's not complete. We still require a lot more in terms of in terms of the details. Okay. Right. Now there's something that we explained last time. We go back to this information, window nodes, B, hinged part, and A, open inside, and C, it's fixed. What it means is that this part does not open, but this one, it opens. But it will be fixed like that, such that you would fix at this point, that's where the window frame or the opening part of the window will be hinged, right? Now, to get that, you can simply extend these miters that you did earlier on, like that. Then take this one back, locate this point, that is the key point that we want, okay? You locate this point, then you connect from this corner, like that, faintly this, then you show by dotted lines or any line, it could be even a solid line, it's fine, but not as dark as an outline, paint like this, like that, okay? Right, so you have got this is the opening part of the window, that's B part, that's A part, and that is the C element of the frame. Still, we are not done, we haven't defined the window seal, Right, with regards to the window seal, just go outside, mark a point. This is the point that I want to use as a reference, okay? Right, so this point here, you take your 30 degree sex square or any appropriate angle. Right, you do this, we want to create an auxiliary view, right? Go back to your notes and check, right? 180 by 20 millimeter seal tile under all window openings. So you measure from here to the 180, then you straighten it up, which will give you the edge. Sometimes you find that it, if it is a full brick, we call that one the brick on edge. But if it is a pre-fabricated seal like this one, it's just a seal. Right, so we have got 180 divided by 50, we have got 3.6. All right, if you want to make it easy for yourself, you can simply measure four millimeters, 3.6. If you can measure 3.6, that's fine. But if you can't, then just measure four millimeters, okay? Then you draw a line like that. So from here to there, that's 180. Then you say 20 
divided by divided by 50 you are going to get 0.4 if you can measure one and a half or no sorry half a millimeter it's fine but you can also still measure a millimeter from here to there then take this one back like this right okay you have got your auxiliary view then you project this auxiliary view back like this like that then you go to the lower part you draw something like that right so this line is a reflection of this point these two points represented by these two lines then you can commit your elevation in terms of the window like that you bring this one down like that you bring this one down then you connect from here to there from here to there like that then you go you now have got your window in position okay fully defined right so what is left right now is to define the sliding door okay right you'll start the sliding door as to how it has been presented you find we have got this panel okay is overlapping the other okay right but remember we had a midpoint so what you do in case there's one which is overlapping the other right like this this is our midline let's just verify yes okay right okay so you can even come here just extend right because it may be cumbersome for you to measure half 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 for half either side right so draw this line like this all the way to the top then you need to miter here like that then you take it down right you also need to miter there like that then you take it down very easy right like this then you take this one up right you take this one also up then you complete Like this. Mm -hmm. Right, but this one still it needs to be taken up like that. That's correct. Okay. Right. Remember this continuous line all the way beyond the end of the door. Okay. Right. Once you have done that, you now show the direction in terms of how it opens. Right, like I said, you can simply thicken one end like this, like that, right. Then you have got the direction in position. This arrow, it's a mark one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, two and a half, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 11, 12, 13. Let's see how many marks, right? You'd find that they may even add one of the lines here right to make it 14 door and window or they can take this one as well as part of of the mark then you will get all your marks seven out of seven like i said even in an examination make sure you can also be able to mark your work as you are doing your work just to make sure that you are checking and seeing every detail that needs to be defined on your floor plan on your on your work in this case it's an elevation okay right boys and girls right with regards to the elevation let's just check again and see if there's anything that we miss with regards to the elevation the outside walls steps window and door detail that part okay the outside walls right we did this the steps we did the window we did the door detail we defined that 
the roof detail, including the batch boards, fascia board, gutter, and rainwater downpipe. That's, that's what we started with. They finished the floor level, right? I think we defined the finish the floor level, right? The other thing is to do with the labels, right? So you come here as well, then you label nicely in terms of the elevation. What elevation is it, right? It's our north elevation. So you write nicely, that's north. Elevation. Right, you can also define the scale that you have used. Right, so it's not elevation scale one is to 50, like that. Right, remember on this side of the batch board, there are no two lines because the other part is actually sitting on top of the roof, okay? But here we'll be able to see the ridge cover, okay? Right, which is also the roof capping, right? So this is it, boys and girls, in terms of the elevation, looking at what we did yesterday, right? So when we meet tomorrow, we are now going to commit question number four in terms of everything put together. Let me just straighten this one so that we are able to see everything, okay? All right, so we have got the section that we did yesterday. We now have got the elevation that we completed today, right? And tomorrow, we are going to start by completing the windows and the doors, right? And everything that is required with remark with regards to the floor plan. But I'm sure now you have got an idea, a good idea in terms of how to complete the question number four, okay? Right, in terms of the elevation, in terms of the section, as we conclude tomorrow with regards to the floor plan, I'm confident you'll be able to do well in terms of your exams. Boys and girls, for today, we are going to end here. Let's meet tomorrow. Be prepared, like I said, all the time. Uh, write notes, take note of areas of concern so that when we meet in an interactive session, you'll be able to pose those questions so that you get the answers that you need. Thank you and good night.